and welcome to the Synopsys Optical Solutions Group training series. This is the first of three videos demonstrating the use of the tolerance capability in light tools. In this video, we will demonstrate the defining of tolerances and performance measures. When conducting a tolerance analysis on a model in light tools, you must define at least one tolerance and at least one performance measure. A tolerance is an input model parameter that can take on values other than the nominal design value within a predefined range. This is typically due to errors in manufacturing or assembly. Examples of typical tolerances would be variation in element position or tilt, thickness, or radius of curvature. As with optimization variables, nearly any user-definable continuous numeric input can be defined as a tolerance. In this example, we have an LED chip inside a cup filled with a phosphor material. The phosphor material has a slight dome on the top of the LED package. The shape of the dome is controlled by a series of parametric expressions and pickups. We will declare tolerances on both the dome thickness as well as the mean free path of the phosphor particles in the material. To declare the dome thickness as a tolerance, we first open the parametric controls window and find the dome thickness numeric parameter. We right click on the value field and select add tolerance. Notice that the parameter value turns blue to indicate that the parameter is now a tolerance. Using the right click context menu again, we can select tolerance properties to access the tolerances property page. Alternately, you can double click on the tolerancing manager in the systems navigator tree. We will keep the symmetric setting and enter a value of 0.2 in the upper entry field. The distribution type indicates the statistical shape of the tolerance distribution. Note that the distribution chart shown at the bottom now reflects the nominal value of 0.5 plus or minus our tolerance of 0.2. Available distribution types are uniform, Gaussian, and positive and negative Weibull. We will keep the default uniform distribution which indicates that the tolerance is equally likely to fall anywhere between the tolerance limits. To test our tolerance definition, we will go to the Tolerance Perturbations tab. On this tab, we can apply temporary perturbation values to the tolerance for inspection or even ray trace and analysis. Here, we will apply a value of 0.2 to the perturbation field and click Apply. Note in the 3D design view that the dome shape changes as expected. We can apply a perturbation of minus 0.2 as well. To clear out perturbations, click the Reset Perturbation button. Clicking the Apply Perturbation to Design button will change the nominal model value to the current value and reset the perturbations to zero. To add the phosphor's mean free path as a tolerance, we will open the Phosphor Materials property box and select the Mean Free Path tab. We repeat the process as before using the context menu to declare the tolerance. In the tolerance input, we will set an upper range limit of 0.01 and leave the symmetric flag checked. A performance measure is an output value that will change because of the changing values of the tolerance parameters. Performance measures should be critical performance objectives for the system. Examples of typical performance measures would be output power, mesh uniformity, beam width, or beam centroid. As with optimization merit functions, nearly any continuous numeric output parameter can be defined as a performance measure. In our example, we will set the average CCT value to the far field intensity mesh as our performance measure. To do this, we open the property box for the far field receiver 
and navigate down to the forward CCT mesh. On the Results tab, we right-click on the Average Output box and select Add Tolerance Performance Measure New. Notice that the output value changes color to indicate its status as a performance measure. On the Tolerancing Input screen, under the Performance Measures node, we can find the new performance measure. We will set both a lower limit of 3400 Kelvin and an upper limit of 3600 Kelvin. This represents a variation of plus or minus 100 degrees Kelvin from the nominal value. Now that the tolerances and performance measures have been defined, the next step in the process is to determine the sensitivities of the performance measure to changes in the tolerance parameters, which we will cover in part two of this video series. In this training video, we have demonstrated how to declare tolerances and performance measures in preparation for a tolerance analysis. If you have any questions or need technical support, please contact us at lighttools underscore support at synopsis.com. Thank you for watching.